2 Timothy chapter 1. And uh, we'll read one verse as our text. Uh -huh, I almost dropped that off there. Second Timothy chapter 1. And our text comes from verse number 5. He says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Today is Mother's Day, a day that's been set aside for honoring mother. And, uh, and, and, and so I would like to first of all say to each mother and grandmother who's here, Happy Mother's Day to you. Uh, your role in uh, raising your children and your grandchildren is uh, very much appreciated. While not everybody in this room is a mother, including yours truly, I'm not a mother, but I can tell you that I have a mother. And uh, so everyone who is in this room is somehow connected, impacted. Life has been touched by mother, including the man that we read about in our text, this preacher by the name of Timothy. This seasoned saint great man of God, great missionary, soldier of the cross, Paul, writing under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, wrote to Timothy, and as he thought about Timothy, and as he thought about the things that Timothy knew, and, and, and how, how much potential Timothy had, and how the things that he liked about Timothy and the qualities that he liked about Timothy, he couldn't help but think about where those qualities came from and where that instruction had come from. And it had come from a godly mother, a godly grandmother. Not only did he think about Timothy's mother and grandmother, but he knew their name. God inspired him to write this, and I believe that God also pleased with your names, the influences that you've had with your children and your grandchildren. The job, the, 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 the work of motherhood, a lot of times it may seem unappreciated. It may seem like it's tough and that little Johnny may not be listening and the, and the dishes are never done and the laundry is always piled up and all of those things. But at the end of it all, you may not get much recognition in this world, but I believe that God very much appreciates the work that you do. I believe that the Actions and reactions of a mother very much make an impact on a child and shape that child into the man or woman that that child will become. What a great thing it is when your son or your daughter sees you living for the Lord. And you know, there are different scenarios that happen in different households. Some, some mothers are able to be home with their children all day long. Others are not. But there is something to be said that every mother is a homeschooler. The question is, to what degree? And what I mean by that is that every mother educates her children. Every mother educates her children, whether she has a purposeful 
conversation with her children every day or not. But the fact is that your children watch you and they are influenced by you, the things that you do. And all of those things influence them into who they will become. Education, including Christian education, isn't all about textbooks and worksheets. It's not all about the one, two, threes and the ABCs, but it's modeling first and instruction second. And I believe that mothers and grandmothers have a special place in shaping uh, the, the, the children that God has placed in our care. And not only that, but also shaping the way that the, the world will go in uh, teaching one child at a time. In, in this, he says, I call to remembrance. Well, let's start, let's look at verse 4. He says, Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. You see, the things that, the things that Lois and Eunice taught, the things that they demonstrated, the things that Tim Timothy learned from them was not something that was opinion. It wasn't something that would die off with them. This was a faith that would last for, for a lifetime. It would outlast his mother and his grandmother. He said, I'm persuaded that it's in thee also. Isn't that our greatest desire is to disciple our own children? In Exodus chapter 20, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12, says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. God's design... God's command here is that we honor father and mother. Is it that God's design in the first place? It being father and mother. The world may say it could be mom and mom. They might say it could be dad and dad. They might even say that it's, uh, that, 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 that it's okay for something else. But God's design, mother and father, for life. For life. That's God's design. But sin has entered into this world, and so God's design has been tainted in this world, but it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change anything. Mothers, mothers deserve to be honored. Mothers ought to be honored. I appreciate my mom. I appreciate the mother of my children. It's also my wife. We've been married now for almost 15 years. But, but God has... God has given us this commandment to honor our mothers. Thankful for my grandmother. You know, she went on to be with the Lord, but I'm thankful for her and the, 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 the teachings and the testimony that she, the legacy that she left behind. In the book of Mark chapter 10,
Mark chapter 10 and verses 6, 7, and 8. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain, but one flesh. Wherefore, what therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. From the beginning, the creation, God made them male and female. God, God has a divine order of the sexes. And the fact of the matter is that God designed women for certain things that he, that he didn't design men for and vice versa. There are just some things that our mothers, that our wives just do better than we do. Uh, there's some things that mother does better than dad. It's just a matter of it. And we, we thank God for that. And we thank God for you. And we... And, 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 and you know, this distinction, it's not something to look, to think bad about. It's not something to get upset about. It's, it's a glorious distinction. We ought to be thankful for it. Malachi chapter number 2. Malachi chapter number 2. Verse 15. Malachi chapter 2 and verse uh, 15. Did he not make one? Yet had he the residue of the Spirit. And wherefore one? That he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit. And let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. You know, we think about being a, a parent there are duties, responsibilities that go along with that. I, I mean, this doesn't have anything to do with mothers, but uh, dads. I, I, someone at work was just telling me the other day about some, some man that uh, had s so many children in the United States, but uh, he never sees any of them, never pays child support, all that sort of thing. Uh, uh, I mean, he may be biological. I question the term dad there. Even animals reproduce. The Bible says that if you don't take care of your own, you're worse than an infidel. What's well, worse than an infidel? Well, it, an animal. An animal doesn't take care of his own. You know, I believe God has a purpose for us in being parents. I believe that motherhood doesn't stop when the umbilical cord is cut, or even, or or or, or even when the child is finished nursing. There's more. There's more to it than that. It even goes on beyond the time whenever they leave the house, doesn't it? God has given us a special place, given, given a, a, a special commandment that we, that we bring up godly seed, that we train our children, that we teach them. Remember our text, Paul was thankful for the godly influence that Timothy's mother and grandmother played in who Timothy became. Let me ask you, you who are mothers, 
What what is it do you want to be remembered for? What kind of a legacy do you want to be passed on down to your children? I find it interesting through Scripture that the only one who's ever spoken of is having the responsibility of teaching children directly is the parents and grandparents. I believe that we can leave behind a great legacy by teaching and training our children and grandchildren. Proverbs chapter 22 Proverbs chapter 22. Verse 6. Proverbs 22 and verse 6. It says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train up a child in the way he should go. Mothers have great responsibility and great opportunity as well. Be great influencers to those who the Lord has entrusted us with, our children. The word train carries more weight than just the word teach. I believe, I believe it's uh, training is training them as soldiers. Taught to handle their arms, to keep rank, to observe the word of command. Train them up on the way that, that they would go. Because remember, as we studied this morning, they're depraved. They're depraved, and all oh, they need some. They need some guidance. They need some help. But train them up in the way they should go. The way in which you would have them to go. You know, God's word has promised it. That uh, he'll bless us, faithful, the Sometimes, uh, sometimes there's a lot of different ways we can we can uh, take sermon and and, and 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 look at things. But I'd like for us to go to Proverbs chapter thirty-one. chapter 31 begin verse 10 <clears throat> who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies the heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life <clears throat> she seeketh wool flax Worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night. And giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. <coughs> Excuse me. She considereth the field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hand she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength. Strengtheneth her arms, she perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates. When he sitteth among the elders of the land, 
She maketh fine linen and selleth it, delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her husband, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful. Beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her, her own works praise her in the gates. We think about Mother's Day, we often think about Proverbs 31, we think about, we think about the, 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 the example given here. Certainly there are godly examples in the Bible. This is a model that we ought to look at. Sometimes in our world we like to look at examples that we see on maybe Pinterest or Facebook or whatever, um, but even even there, there in in this world we find some good examples of some godly women. But you can't get any better than God's word. God says, "Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies." Doesn't say, "Hey, who can find a." woman with a dress size this size or a woman with this color of eyes or this shade of lipstick or, 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 or whatever the world might think of or this designer clothes or he says favor is deceitful beauty is vain but a woman that feareth the Lord she shall be praised. You know, and when I think about all these things, think about God is good and it's never no, no, no he, he he gives us he gives us these things for us to learn from. God has blessed us with so many great mothers. We, we ought to thank God for them. Thank God for their testimony, for their, uh, for, for, for their hard work, for their teaching, for the things that they've left behind, for the things that they're teaching us now. Those that are mothers now today with little ones, well, the work isn't done. Remember this. God never said it was easy. But I do believe that you'll find in His Word that there is great reward in, 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 in being faithful. I really believe that. Praise God for mothers. Praise God for His Word. Praise God for His grace and His mercy. May the Lord bless you with this message. Brother uh, Brother Kenny, would you please pray for us? Heavenly Father, thank you.